Hello again. Um, it's Catherine. Hi. Um, today, I feel like a reporter. I'm coming to you from LA. Um, I've had to fly out here to help James take care of some things. But I've been thinking about um, the last video that I posted about distractions and that there was more that I wanted to say or that needed to be said about that. So I thought I would just go ahead and do another video. Um, I have a computer and uh, the light was okay, so why not? Um, so first of all, right after I posted that video last week, and I mean literally within the hour, I was speaking to someone who on their own brought up exactly the idea of distraction. Um, this person was asking me about um, doing things to numb herself and she literally used those words which um, I, was, I was struck by and fascinated by and of course immediately thought well there's the magic right so here's something I need to listen to this you know this is this is coming up um, so anyway we started talking about it and in talking about it um, something was pointed at she was able to point out something to me which I don't think I emphasized enough in the video and which I want to follow up on because I think it's really important. And that is that, you know, I was sort of focusing on the end of the distraction, right? The point at which you either, you know, take the drink, make the call, grab the Ben and Jerry's, start shopping, have, throw yourself into work, whatever it is, become really busy, think of a million errands you need to run. That's one of my favorites, by the way, recently. Um, but there's this whole process before you engage in whatever distraction that is also distracting and is really part of, probably takes up a lot more time and is a lot more distracting. And that is the whole thought process around it. When you're thinking about it, when you're thinking about, oh, I really want X or I wanna do X, but I'm not gonna do it. And this is all the reasons that I'm not gonna do it. And then you start to spin, right? With all the thoughts about it, back and forth and back and forth. And that's what I call that the vortex, which I think I've mentioned in earlier videos. And the vortex is a really awful place to be, right? Where you just feel like you're stuck in this spin cycle that you can't get out of and it's really awful. And I have to give credit to Joe Dispenza here, who I highly recommend um, if you're up for reading any of, of his books. Um, and I think Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself is so, or something like that. That's um, that's the book where he talks about the technique that I'm about to talk about right now. And that's just imagining a big stop sign, right? So if you're in the vortex and you're going and you're going, and that's to just imagine a giant stop sign being thrown up in your head. Stop, stop, stop. And you may have to do it a lot, right? To try to get out of a spin cycle. Stop, stop. But it does work. It takes some persistence, but it does work. You know, notice that you're in the spin cycle. Notice how it makes you feel in your body. And then just say to yourself, I don't need to do this. Stop. Stop. Just the intention of starting to stop it will help you feel more in control because that's part of this whole thing too, right? That's part of what drives all this anxiety is control. We don't feel like we have control of our own thoughts. We don't feel like we have control of anything. Well, we can, the one thing, the one thing we can control in all of this madness right now, right, is your own thoughts, right? And this was further, um, uh, what's the word, inspired um, by, or thoughts about this were further inspired by an article that I read this morning uh, when I woke up early, because I'm on West Coast now, um, about David Chang, who is the chef um, of the Mamafuku uh, Empire, and who's at least one of whose, rest whose restaurants I've been privileged enough to eat in, and his food is fantastic. And he's just written a book called Eat a Peach. He's also the host of Ugly Delicious, which is on cable or whatever we call it now. Um, Netflix or something. Anyway, he, David Chang, suffers from bipolar depression. Uh, bipolar, um, <laughs> okay, I'm losing my stuff. Obviously, I haven't had enough coffee yet. Sorry. Anyway, he's, he is challenged by bipolar disorder, and he's written a book called Eat a Peach. 
And in the article that I read, and I, and I don't like to normally read from anything, but I am going to um, read one quote, which I'll probably put at the top of the video as well, because I thought it was especially um, poignant and, and again, uh, sort of inspired me to, to, to think about this some more. And that is he quotes Thoreau and he says, um, I know of no more encouraging fact than the unquestionable ability of man, woman or person to elevate their life by conscious endeavor, right? That's it, right? That's the same idea that we can change our thoughts and therefore in change and our thoughts drive our feelings because our thoughts set off chemical reactions in our brains that then set off feelings in our bodies and emotions and all of that is the scale. So if you can begin to rein that stuff in, if you can begin to change the way you think about stuff, that's, that's the key to setting yourself free, right? That's the key to everything. And the other thing that he says is that he had a personal breakthrough um, where he thought to himself, if nothing matters, and this was during a depressive episode, if nothing matters, then what do I have to lose, right? And oh my gosh, like we're pretty much there, right? If nothing matters, what do I have to lose? Why not try? Why not do the thing that you've always thought about doing? Why not? Why not? Why not? Really, why not? And I wanna make one other point. And that is um, my wonderful spiritual coach, uh, Vera Lester, check her out, um, taught me something early on and when we were working together and it, it may have sort of saved my life or at least saved me one night of incredible discomfort. Um, and it also has to do with things going on now, which I'll explain in a second. Um, but the, the thing that I learned from her that we talked about um, early on in our work together was if you're overwhelmed, right? If you are lost, sit down, okay? Because I don't want to discount the idea that with everything going on, that whatever that is for you, that you can be overwhelmed. Absolutely, you can be overwhelmed. And, and you can want to go and, and you, it almost might feel better to be in the vortex than to, than, to, um, than to be overwhelmed, right? But if you're truly overwhelmed, sit down, take a rest, okay? Take a rest. And if when you sit down and you're quiet, that's sometimes when the vortex comes in, right? Because you're quiet for a minute and that is that can be a scary place to be too, right? Because that's when when you have time to think, and that's when when things can get really scary, right? But sit down, take a rest, take stock of where you are, if you truly feel lost, right? Um, and the quick story that I'll tell you about my literal experience with this was um, I don't think I've told this story here in this forum before, but. Um, last summer, when I was up in North Carolina, I was at my mother's house by myself in the mountains, and I decided late one afternoon that I would take a hike. Now, this is a hike that I have been taking for 25 years up to Chimney Top from my parents' house. It has recently, in the last couple of years, due to a variety of forces, which I will not talk about right now, um, become sort of overgrown. But I we had gone through my brother had gone through and sort of hacked through some of the stuff and we had continued to hike that path when we were there and we had done some marking of it and so I felt like with the knowledge that I had of the terrain for all the time that I'd I'd hiked this path that there was no way that I would get lost right because I knew it so I set off with no water in yoga clothes t-shirt and yoga pants and my running shoes so I was not equipped for a hike I didn't have my phone with me not that there's much service back there I had my eye watch it was the only piece of equipment that I had with me I literally had nothing else I was just thinking I was gonna hike up to the saddle and back and that's maybe three miles round trip and it's not that difficult terrain either I mean it's very foresty but it's not rocky it's not dangerous and I thought no problem right 
So I get up to the saddle, and part of the reason I was able to get up to the saddle is because I could see the light coming from between the, the trees at, at where they're, they're two. There's uh, Rock Mountain and Chimney Top, and so there's a little dip, which we call the saddle between the two, and I could see light coming, and I could see the trees, so I could find the saddle. When I was going back down, as the sun was going down, things changed a little bit, and I did lose my way. I couldn't find the path. I lost the path somehow. The path I thought I knew so well, I lost. So I wandered around for a while with the sun going down, it seemed too quickly. And I started to get really scared and I started to get cold because it does dip down, you know, sometimes into the fifties at night in the summer up there. And I knew the directions. I knew Northwest, North, South, East and West. And I knew which direction the house was in from actually having set it up so that I could do yoga <laughs> toward the east or the west anyway. But I did know and then be able to look at the sun and knowing that it was setting in the west. But there was a huge piece of granite between me and the direction of the house. So I had to find the path because I had to go around the granite. I couldn't go over it. It was too big and I didn't have and I wasn't equipped to climb it. So I had to find the path. I had no choice but to find the path. And my eye watch was dying. I made a, tried to make a call um, and couldn't. And I fell a couple of times. I stumbled. I was sort of racing around. I was starting to move faster and faster in my anxiety about what was going on. And the thoughts of, oh my God, nobody's at the house. Nobody even knows I went on this hike. Nobody knows where I am. Nobody's gonna miss me for at least a couple of days until my brother and his family come up because we were getting the girls out of camp. And I thought, wow, I just, this never occurred to me that this might happen, that I might find myself in this place. And all of a sudden I realized that is, with my bruised legs and my wet feet and stumbling around and having no idea where I was, I just needed to sit down for a minute. So I sat down for a minute. I sat down on a stump and I cried. And I cried about a lot of stuff because last summer wasn't a whole lot more fun <laughs> than this summer has been. I think I'm gonna boycott summers from now on, but anyway. So I sat on the stump and I cried. And then after a few minutes, I wasn't crying so much and then I started to take some deep breaths and I grounded myself and I calmed myself down and I thought, okay, I can do this. I can figure this out. And then a thought occurred to me. I mean, really it was a message, but you can think of it however you want to. It doesn't bother me. And the message that I got was follow the light. And I'm not joking. Okay, I know this sounds weird, but the message was follow the light. So I got up and I looked around and I realized that the way the sun was shining, there was light in the forest and that was a direction. So I got up and I followed the light. And after following the light for, I don't know, a couple hundred yards, I saw the path. So I literally followed the light to the path, right? And I got to the path and within 20 or 30 minutes, I was back home and I was safe. I don't know what would have happened if I hadn't sat down for a minute and just cried and sat in the vortex for a second before I then collected myself. And that's the important part is that you have the ability to collect yourself. I know you do. You have the ability to stop the thoughts. You have the ability to get out of the vortex. You have the ability to sit down, take stock, and then figure out what direction you need to go. I have faith in that because God knows if I can do it, anybody can do it, right? So I will leave you with that. I wish you well. Um, I'm still uh, thinking about and praying for all the people who were in the path of Laura and all the fires that are still burning in California and other places. So amongst other things, and then also, you know, um, terrible things that have, that have happened to people and, and the Jacob Blake shooting and everything else. But if you're overwhelmed, sit down, take stock, and figure out how you can move forward because we can all move forward. Big love. Mwah. Bye.
Yeah, that's what we saw. 